uh, we have been discussing and deliberating on the uh, ideal gas law where molecules do not interact. We have done monatomic gas uh, which has the given rise to an important expression of entropy of translation due to translation degrees of freedom which is Hakut tetrod equation. Then we did diatomic the everywhere we had certain uh, payoff. In the case of uh, diatomic molecules we did the vibrational degrees of freedom which though for molecules do not directly affect the thermodynamics, but the vibrational partition function uh, model as harmonic oscillator with the Schrodinger solution from Schrodinger equation gives us the, the expression of the entropy and uh, free energy and specific heat, which turns out to be extremely important in context of the um, in, uh, specific heat of solids and uh, crystalline and amorphous solids. And that is the way to think. Then we did polyatomic. But however, all these ideal gas, the molecules could be rich in internal structure, like in polyatomic molecules in water and uh, methane and uh, sulfur dioxide or methanol. However, they are non interacting. That means the molecules are modeled as phantom things, they can, they can pass through each other, they do not see each other. Now, in a high temperature and in low density, the majority of the contribution to phase space or to partition function comes from non interacting path. So, this high temperature or uh, low density gas works out quite well, you know, the, uh, they are the, this, this ideal gas is not a poor approximation, yes it breaks down, but as soon as you enter in uh, dense liquids, dense, uh, dense gases, dense gases or the um, uh, liquids, then these non interacting limit w and it was very, very difficult. So, you know people realized that very quickly and they were trying to get around it by these uh, solids, they get around by doing quite a bit by normal mode approximation like it was done by um, Einstein and Dewey. Then in the quantum cases, uh, these Bose-Einstein statistics and fermi dirac statistics uh, that was very useful by explaining uh, superfluidity, but that was also again we did not we did not do to consider interactions there we went to a representation and where we could do the like you know in statistics it is just non interacting particles in both statistics for me statistics is so important elect describing electron gas but there is free electron gas we did not have to take interaction into electrons in that all. it was like that till 1935 36 but in 37 however a very significant development took place and that came from uh, Joseph Mayer. Mayer did realize that that the uh, difficulty, Mayer realized one very important thing that in order to understand the real gases uh, and in order to understand gas liquid transition, he was not thinking of liquid solid transition that was far from his you know, he was uh, he was really just trying to do uh, real gases, dense gases because you know from uh, uh, Van der Waals. Uh, you know from Van der Waals uh, equation of state, we know from Van der Waals equation of state that if we can, uh, if we uh, plot uh, pressure against uh, density, then this is the part very low density part 0, very low density part goes like ideal gas, then it start bends and then it undergoes a phase transition. Now, if I think of A, then uh, ideal gas that goes over like that. Uh, this is the ideal gas. This is ideal gas. But this is real gas. This is how real gas, uh, real, real. So, real gas bends, bends from here, then um, it bends like this, and then it uh, flats. This is coexistence, and this is the liquid. However, Van der Waals when tried to uh, describe this behavior, it is a wonderful equation, Van der Waals equation of state, he got something like that, that called Van der Waals loop, which Maxwell, Maxwell fixed by doing the Maxwell tie line. And this what we call spinodal and all this kind of stuff, we do not uh, want to get into it right now. However, the, the important thing is that, that this departure, so Mayer was interested to describe this departure, the departure from the ideal gas. And Mayer just like Van der Waals, see before that Van der Waals did that, 
Van Oz took it in attraction and repulsion molecules. So, Mayer already knew that uh, how to proceed, he knew that we have to take to the molecules, if they, even if they are spheres, they attract each other uh, in an intermediate distance, very far of course, they do not interact and when they come very close to each other, bang, they, they repulse it because that is the overlap of the electrons. So, he is a famous equation of state that uh, P plus A by V square V minus B equal to RT, the Van der Waals equation of state where A, A talks of attraction, B is the size of the molecules. What is the size of the molecules? That is nothing but because they repel each other, the repulsion defines the size of the molecule, diameter of the molecule. So, Mayer knew that, Mayer knew that this is the way to go that I need to have attraction and I, at, at an intermediate distance. I need to have repulsion is a very short distance when the molecules touch each other and they are to the interaction has to fall to 0 when they go further. But how do you go about it? Van der Waals did it phenomenologically remember he said ok the total amount of volume accessible to a, a, a molecule is uh, total volume minus the volume of individual molecules and then uh, when a molecule going to hit the wall to define the pressure. Remember, he was still following Max, uh, Ma the Maxwell Boltzmann kind of a uh, kinetic theory picture of pressure that pressure comes because molecules interact, molecules go and hit a wall. And that molecule is pulled back because there are certain other molecules near it which attract it. So, I, the, the ideal gas it would have pressure P. Now, that pressure gets uh, uh, decreased and volume get decreased. Okay. So, basically what he added, wanted to add it, okay, I want a reduce a, a effective pressure P and a effective volume P so that I get it RT. So, I still working on PV equal to RT, ideal gas law. But then he said, okay, the V actually is little reduced and the pressure that I really get that pressure would be if I want to get the ideal pressure, then I have to add this term to get the ideal. So, I want to write P V equal to RT, but P and V are different because of the interaction. So, the he got the idea that is the logic he gave to get the uh, Van der Waals equation of state, but that will not work right because we now need to uh, uh, we need a molecular description. We, we are talking of microscopy, so we are going to have a the, not this kind of hand waving argument which works reasonably well, but still hand waving. Uh, we want to have real molecules, real interaction potentials, that how do you go about it? There is nothing there before Mayer did it. That is why Mayer's contribution is so important and that is why you are spending a time on discussing Mayer's theory. Okay. We want a fully microscopic statistical mechanical analysis of interacting many body systems. And what do we mean by interacting many body systems? Let again go down a little bit now and let us see. So, we have a potential, these I described. that uh, interaction potential say u r between two molecules i and j and this is r i j and this is r i j, then the interaction potential I have in mind is something like that and this is called Leonard Jones. Interaction potential, so u r equal to 4 epsilon sigma by r to the power 12 minus sigma by r to the power 6. This is the attractive term and uh, sorry, this is the repulsive term because of the 12 and this is attractive with a negative sign in front. So, this is the 1 over 12 part when they and this is the where the molecules um, kind of touch each other. So, this is the molecular diameter sigma and this is sigma. Then it zoom the energy goes up, when they separate a little, then there is an attraction, this is called London forces because of the induced dipole induced interactions and we, I, I cannot go into that and then it goes like that. We will at one point of time talk of intermolecular forces, but this is the kind of thing that I have. One important thing to note that this is a radial potential, that means depends only on R, there is no angle. So, these are just spheres, it is the simplest possible thing. So, the, if we have this kind of interaction potential, then we want to. Uh, so, 
So, we have starts with intermolecular potential. So, given intermolecular potential, so I give you the Leonard Jones, the simple one. Then we want to do calculate the we attempt to evaluate the partition function from first principles like sum over energy levels, interaction over the e to the power minus beta is Hamiltonian, that is the thing. So, that was the thing that Joseph Mayer did and we are going to do that. In the process, he introduced what could be considered first graph theory of liquids and gases and that he did the cluster expansion and he got a huge number of results that came out of these things. Not only that, that made the beginning of classical statistical mechanics, the most significant step after Bolch, uh, uh, Willard Gibbs, Boltzmann and Willard Gibbs. So, it, 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 it derived, uh, it, it gave a derivation of ideal coefficients, it explained many of the things of van der Waals language of cluster size distribution of clusters which are so popular and microscopic picture of gas liquid transition all these things came out and uh, so next we uh, this is interaction but we already done that. Now, so let us start the working now we have the uh, n number of particles n number of particles. So, in a system I have box volume V and I have n number of spheres they are not low density and the uh, spheres are interacting with that with the Leonard Jones potential, Leonard Jones potential and this is the molecular diameter sigma. So, two spheres are teaching that is sigma and r i j is the distance it goes little bit faster than drawn here ok. And this is the in attra height of the attraction uh, depth of the maximum attraction potential and this is epsilon. So, the uh, that uh, this this is epsilon that epsilon is this epsilon ok all right so we have this uh, this hamiltonian kinetic energy plus potential energy and we have to evaluate with that hamiltonian we have to evaluate this partition function we have to evaluate this beast and look at that i have these are vectors. I have n vector integration over position, n vector integration over momentum. I have Boltzmann factor 1 over n factorial and I have h to over 3 n the, the Planck constant. As we told in the very beginning that this is a formidable thing of statistical mechanics to evaluate this integral. This is just this is the holy grail of you know, statistical mechanics to evaluate the partition function. If I have partition function, I have everything. I have free energy, I have entropy, I have specific heat, I have com compressibility, everything. But how do you get the partition function? That is the problem. So, whenever you try to do something so formidable as this one, the idea is to divide and rule and we will uh, uh, divide and conquer and we will do that divide and conquer thing. Okay. So, then this is a partition function. If I get the partition function, I get the free energy and I get the pressure and the equation of state and the beta h this thing now the h can is written this is the kinetic energy and this is the potential energy potential energy is sum over. So, we assume that potential energy is pairwise additive that is there is very good approximation, but still a simplification it goes wrong now and then, but uh, it is perfectly okay with to, to start with this pairwise additivity that means total total potential energy can be a, a, a as a sum or note and look at the notation here. So, that we avoid avoid double counting uh, we have to say that the i and j runs like is greater than equal to 1, but j is greater than 1. So, the terms will be written as u 1 2 u 2 3 plus u 3 4 plus u 1 3 plus u 3 4 or 1 4 like that. That means, you have uh, or rather do 1 3 1 4 then 2 3 2 4 like that. So, that I do not count it twice. So, so with this u n now uh, formidable because of the Leonard Jones I, I set out to calculate the partition function. What do I do it now? So, I write down the partition function again putting the whole thing here. Now, I you know, immediately notice in a, a classical partition function I can evaluate this part like I did in translational momentum of gas. 
because they decouple from that and they, they decouple some of themselves. Moment of one particle is not coupled to moment of one uh, other particle and x coordinate is not con uh, connected to y coordinate. So, it is p x square p y square p z square uh, for one first particle, second particle, third particle and I can do that integration. We did that just exactly like that we did and that gives I know this part uh, the, that we did in ideal gas law. And we know that part is due to second tertiary solution. So, you can see the decomposition of beautifully decomposition since free energy is a log of that term, they already start decomposing. Uh, log that this part, uh, the ideal gas part and the interactive part. And this part is called the configuration integral, is now contains all the non trivial contributions, all the non trivial contribution of the effective interactions of the system. This part which gives, uh, makes gas uh, to condense to liquid that cause liquid to go to crystal, the, this interaction part which let, uh, let you and me to talk and walk around. So, that is all in this configuration integral. So, we are now going to uh, find out how to evaluate that thing and we just rewrote re that, that there are uh, this, this is sum e to the power minus. I can write now that quantity I write as a product because e to the power minus uh, a plus b is e to the minus a dot e to the minus b. So, this is sum, this sum I it goes to product and this is just a notation, no, no big deal. Now, difficulty of doing this integration was people tried that this thing, the, the potential unfortunately goes to long distance goes to 0 and potential goes to 0 e to the power minus that potential that goes to 1 and that is bad news for us because I have to integrate and it, uh, something which is less than 1 because e to the minus beta u can be less than 1 in short distance, greater than 1 in intermediate distance, but then tapers off to 1. It is a very complex function e to the power minus beta u i j. So, Mayer did a brilliant thing at that point and you know he said ok, these integrals that I am trying to do in configuration integral are not convergent because uh, they are giving lot of difficulties because in the long the separation they are coming away with a contribution unity, contribution 1 and that is not a good thing for me uh, because I cannot do, I want to separate it out so that I do not have to worry about the long separation part. So, introduce this function which is called Mayer f function which is f. So, this is called me array function. He said, okay, let me write the following way. I write f r i j f i j e to minus with the minus 1. I take out the minus 1 part. So, that now r going to infinity, r i j going to separation between two molecules becoming very large, beta i u i r j going to 0. So, this quantity going to 1 and then this quantity going to 0, uh, f r i j going to 0. So, this is embodied here. So, it is a beta i j which is causing the problem was going and this actually it was uh, uh, this is 1. So, it was stopping at 1, but now I have taken it out 1. So, it start negative it was before that it was starting when it was infinity you at short distance infinity it was starting from 0 starting from 0 and is intermediate distance when there is attraction is becoming greater than 1. Now, I am taking it out. So, it starts from minus 1 and it goes above can go above 1 or so depending on the uh, depth of the attraction, but now in long distance is going to 0, this is 0, this is a 0 line is going to 0. So, it is very good now I can do the try to do this integration then what may I did or something really very very interesting. He said okay, let me write the partition function now which the partition function is written as the product of uh, these are now only have uh, positions and e to the power minus beta u r i j as I said is the product and f r i. So, this quantity is now replaced as 1 plus f i j this become because f i j is uh, this quantity minus 1. So, this quantity 1 plus f which is written at 1 plus f. So, my canonical partition function now is becomes like that and then I uh, the beauty is that now beauty now I can uh, decompose it. Now, I can do that look I uh, uh, write it out like let us say the 3 particle or uh, 2 part 1 f 1 2 1 plus f 2 3 3 particle system or, or 3 1. 
just let us consider that we have n equal to 3, 3 particles then, then I have first term is 1, second term is f 1 2, f 1 2 3, f 3 1, f 1 2 plus f 2 1 uh, 3 and f 2 3, then there are uh, 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 another set of particles uh, terms that are binary terms f 1 2 f uh, 2 3. Uh, f 2 3 f 3 1 uh, but there is one term which is f 1 2 f 2 1 f 3 all three are present. So, this is now done here is symbolically written you know 1 comes then these are these isolated terms which are uh, 1 2 plus 1 3 plus 1 4 then these are the product terms. Uh, now, may I introduce these following uh, to beginning of the graph theory and this is as far as I know the first application of graph theory to statistical mechanics is it ok first term which comes with the value 1 is just 1 dot. Second term which is this series of terms are 2 dots and joined by line and line is the mere function. Then there are 3 dots and there are chain and there are 3 dots and I can form a ring. Total number of m uh, and then he said ok. Let me now consider that uh, total number of uh, single particles as m 1, this guy which is a cluster of size 2, total number of particles that m 2 then total number of particles of then these things we call them m 3 which includes this one. So, so now m l is the number of clusters of size l that does not make any distinction whether there is a singly connected doubly connected. So, and then I can of course write in equal to l. I mean you can beginning to see something that is kind of things we played the game in particular canonical going micro canonical to canonical that kind of game we are going to play because this is a constraint that will come in my writing a partition function and I will do exactly like that. I will try to write a, a total number of ways I can distribute particles to this cluster and then uh, you can imagine that I can have the constant and I will get a uh, Lagrangian undetermined multiplier. That is the game that is played and uh, then we have done it before. Then what Mayer did ok, he did something uh, very smart. He said well, I have defined a number of ML at a number of clusters of size L. Now, can I now give a weight to a cluster of size L? He said, okay, I will do that because he know looked at the partition function. He saw, saw that they had nothing product and A of um, uh, F i j. So, now he said that I will now have all the integrals which are connected, all the connected diagrams that means say 3 particle will be f 1 2 f 2 3 plus f um, 2 3 f 3 1 plus f 3 1 f 1 2 plus f 1 2 f 2 3 f 3 1. So, these are all 3 particle clusters, they are all connected, they are chain diagrams like this, these and these are chain diagrams and ring diagrams. So, he said I put them all together and the weight of these to the partition function I call it B L the cluster integrals. And then I define it as 1 over L factorial V, a V is very important for reason I will say for normalization and then I have integral over D 1 and I have the product, this is the product F 1 to F that is the product, then this is sum and this is sum 1, 2, 3, 4, you just write it down and you will see it work out beautifully. Then B L are sum of all these things. So, for one single particle there is L factorial V and there is nothing inside D R 1 I get 1, 2 particles is a ring I can do that and I say 1 over 2 V and D R 1 do F R 1 2. Now, I can change my coordinate system I can go to particle 1 and say uh, then this becomes already it is 1 2 this becomes 1 2 then yeah, I, I get an integral and then say r 1 to i r. So, d r 4 is v r, d r 1 is not involved I can integrate out and uh, that is a coordinate origin I get a v that cancels this v. So, I get this quantity v 3 the exact what I wrote down this is the v 3. What is the advantage now? The great advantage is achieved by decomposition, uh, decomposing it and then once you decompose like that you sum contribution to configuration integral because that is what we are trying to do the total configuration integral of clusters of size L. So, it is a graph theoretical decomposition that becomes this quantity. So, there, there are ML clusters 
ML clusters of size L and they come with the weight VBL and then I VBL to the power ML because ML is the number of clusters of size L and clusters of size L all of them put together and they bring together a size ML. So, that becomes that and this part is I have ML cluster each of them L. So, I can now in classical statistical mechanics I can rearrange them. So, uh, L factorial is the way I can distribute and there are ML such clusters. In my system uh, at any time there are L, uh, ML such clusters of size L. So, the L factorial to the power ML. So, that becomes that. Now, comes the important thing that how do I now. So, I but these clusters are, can be many different size and, and they are fleeting. They are not real clusters. They are clusters which are we call mathematical clusters because they are connected by this bond, F bond, Mary bond. So, uh, every arrangement is possible. Uh, so, I can uh, out of n fact, a, a total n number of particles, how many ways I can form this cluster? That is n factorial by these just the combinators that you all of you have done in the uh, school uh, multinomial. So, now this is the weight of one set of ML and that one set of ML I can do uh, this is the number of ways omega and then so I need to make the product of that get the partition function then the partition function is 1 over L factorial ML and this ML this L factorial this cancels and N factorial remains here and then I get VBL to the power ML and the sum over all possible combinations of this kind then I get this beautiful expression VBL to ML by is exact and this is called mere partition function. Now, one can go do a lot in uh, with this thing. We still have not done one thing. So, we uh, that we have not calculated BL. We have not evaluated these things that is what Mayer did. But in the process they introduced the cluster integrals there is a recursive way of if you know the BL then these actually nothing but a polynomial called Bell polynomials and then that is described in my book then one can have a beautiful relation recursion relation between the end which allow between Zn plus 1 and lower series. So, we can build up the configuration integral the which is the total actually the non trivial part of the partition function. We can so if I know these cluster integrals, if I know the uh, uh, reduce this called reducible cluster integrals, then I can calculate the partition function.